Greetings, everyone, and welcome to church today. I'm Pastor Corey Conran, and it is such a privilege to gather with you today to worship God, to encourage one another, to lift one another up, and to help each other bear our burdens. We are the church because we are God's people. I mean, people with lives and stories and pasts, but people who have hope because God promises us a future better than anything we could come up with for ourselves. He has shown us what it means to be loved and welcomed and every day in every way, we know that he is working in us and through us to transform us more and more into who he created you and me to be. And we're doing it, doing it alongside other folks who have their own lives and stories and pasts who are being transformed as well. We're here today to connect with God and to be equipped by him and used by him. And that's why no matter where we are, how we are gathered today, whether it's online or in our building or what, we are the church. As we prepare for worship, grab your Bible. Uh, it's always good to have it ready and to read with us um, as we get into our scripture readings. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, two passages from the Gospels, Matthew chapter 6 and then Philippians chapter 4. So go ahead and turn there so you're ready when we uh, when we read here in just a few minutes and as we continue our new message series for October entitled He Gets Us. And whether you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube today, take a second down below in the comments and let's welcome one another and let's uh, let's have some fun while we're doing it. Go ahead and finish this statement. I would like to blank this fall. I would like to go driving and see the colors on the trees before they change this fall, before they, they all go away this fall. Check out our digital bulletin today at coopersvilleumc.updates.church. There you're going to find our order of worship, what's going on in our service today. You're also going to find our connect card. It would be really great if you'd fill that out for us. Let us know that you're here. We'd, you're here. We'd love to get, you know, to get to know you better. Uh, you'll also find our prayer card there for you to share ways that we can be praying as a community for you, for your family. You'll also find links for our online giving, our website, our upcoming events. We've also added a link on there for uh, for the He Gets Us campaign that we're, that our sermon series is focused on over these next four week, or three weeks um, for you to check out more and get more familiar with that. Would you join me in prayer as we start our time of, of worship? And then when the music starts, let's join our voices together and sing. Jesus, we come here today to meet you. We've heard your call, your invitation, and we come here to be with you. Um, and maybe even to get something from you. But also we want to give you something. Our hearts. We know we're here because of you. So use us today. Uh, pour your love and grace into us Work in us through your mighty power. Bless us as we seek to bless your holy name today. Amen.
One of the great things about the church that God has called together is the community, the family that he has assembled. We share life together, the struggles and the joys. And today we're celebrating one of those joys. One of our longtime members, Maureen Leach, is turning 100 years young on October 10th. So we're going to celebrate this, this monumental birthday. And in order to do that, we've put together a little happy birthday video for her. In 2013, our church youth put together a, a video project where they interviewed many of our older ladies of our church about their lives and, and their favorite Christmas memories. So we went and we found the footage and thought that we would start our celebration video by sharing some of Maureen's stories. I was born in Lansing, Michigan on October the 10th, 1922. I went to a one-room schoolhouse. Um, we had cars, and we had electricity, and we had uh, telephone back then, but we didn't have malls. We didn't have TV or computers. And uh, oh, we played outside, and uh, in the winter we uh, uh, sledded at sleds. Our parents had a a business was it was a tavern, and uh, we they had uh, dancing. It was the big band era and live music, and it was just the busiest place out around Grand Haven you ever knew of for a long, long time. And uh, so we we lived upstairs from the, this tavern, and uh, in 1937 on Thanksgiving night, the tavern the entire building burned to the ground and we lost everything. So um, it, I guess oh, probably a few weeks after that, we got over the shock. My brother and I, we just thought, oh boy, you know, we're probably not going to get any Christmas presents. And uh, me 15, he was 13, and uh, our parents didn't have insurance, so we thought we were never going to be able to get anything this year. and so. Uh, when Christmas came, we got one thing, we got ice skates, and we were on the bio and the river, and we couldn't believe it. We thought, wow, how did they do that, you know? Because we were old enough to realize that was, that was quite something. Hi Maureen, it's Ryan. Hi, it's Jesse. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy 100th birthday. Have a great day. I'm Rachel and happy 100th birthday, Maureen. Hi Maureen, I'm Sydney Cypher and I want to wish you a happy 100th birthday. Can you say hi? Say hi, Lydia. Can you say hi? Hi Maureen, my name's Karen Cypher. I am Pastor Corey's mother. I want to say that we miss you here in our church. You have been a staple here, and happy birthday. Hi, Maureen. Happy 100th birthday. I want you to, I'm Shaw Reffer, and I want you to know that you're one of the reasons I stayed at Cooperstown United Methodist Church. You brought me that bread that day when we were building the house. My love to you. Hi, I'm Shar's granddaughter, Katie, and happy 100th birthday. Hi, this is Tina and Andy Schuster. Happy 100th birthday. Happy birthday. Hi, Maureen. It's Grace Holmes. Long time no see, but I am just here to wish you a happy 100th birthday. Bye. <laughs> Maureen, happy 100th birthday. So glad to, and thank you for your card and your pick. Happy birthday, Maureen, from the Marks family. 100 years is quite the journey. Here's to many more. Hi, Maureen. This is Gary Walsh. You're going to hit the big 101. 100 
zero zero. Wow. Can't can't compete with that. Hope you do real good. Have a good birthday. Happy birthday, Maureen. Wow, a hundred years. That is awesome and so amazing. Happy birthday, Maureen. Go Tigers. Hi, Maureen. It's Gail wishing you a happy 100th birthday. And I'm so glad we're able to celebrate it with you. Happy birthday, Maureen. We have really good memories of those beautiful bookmarks you have made for the kids with their Bibles. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hey, Maureen, happy birthday, 100th. I just realized that you're 18 years older than I am. Are you my mother? Hi, Maureen. It's uh, Leslie. I just want to wish you happy 100. That's 100th birthday. Bless you. Hi, Maureen. This is Diane. Seth wanted to tell you happy birthday, 100 years. That's so amazing. I also wanted to thank you for sharing your key lime pie recipe with me. I have made hundreds for church and different families, and everyone loves them. I hope you have the best day. Hi, Maureen. Maureen. Happy Dale. birthday. Happy birthday. This is Dale and Nancy and Druger, and um, we miss you very, very much, and have a great day. Hi, Maureen. This is Pat McCormick Metcalf, classmate at Jack's. I just wanted to wish you a wonderful birthday, and it was great to see you earlier this year also. Have a blessed day. Happy birthday, Maureen. God has blessed you with a long life, and because of your strong faith in Jesus, we know that we will get to see you in eternity, and we look forward to that glorious celebration. May God bless each day you have, and thank you for sharing a part of your life with this church community. Happy birthday, hon. Hi, my name is Maureen Leach, and I want to invite you to open your Bibles today as we read our scripture passages. We will be reading Matthew 6, verse 31, 34, Philippians 4, verse 6. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Matthew 6, 31, 34. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. And from Philippians 4, verse 6, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In 2019, just prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, about 20% of adults experienced a mental illness. That's about 50 million Americans. Nearly 5% of American adults have seriously contemplated taking their lives, and that data was from before 2020. In fact, the national rate of suicidal ideation among adults has increased every year since 2011. 15% of youth aged 12 to 17 have experienced a major mental health episode in the past year. And over half of those with treatable mental illnesses don't get the treatment they need because of uh, lack of insurance, lack of available care, or the stigma that surrounds getting help. And the data and our own personal experiences have shown us that COVID-19 did nothing to help the mental health situation in our world. 
In fact, the World Health Organization states that COVID the COVID-19 pandemic triggered a 25% increase in the prevalence of anxiety and depression worldwide. They called it a wake-up call to all countries to step up mental health services and support. Occasional anxiety is a normal part of life. Many people, they worry about things such as health, money, or family problems. But anxiety disorders involve more than temporary worry or fear. For those with an anxiety disorder, the feelings of anxiety don't go away and they can get worse over time. Its symptoms can interfere with daily activities like job performance, schoolwork, and relationships. Anxious thoughts and worrying feelings can cause a, a vast array of symptoms like feeling restless uh, or wound up or on edge, uh, being easily fatigued, having difficulty concentrating, being irritable, having headaches, muscle aches, stomach aches, unexplainable pains, difficulty controlling your feelings, uh, having sleeping problems, having a hard time staying asleep or falling asleep. These symptoms, they can often interfere in life with, with work, with family, with relationships. And it's not the same, the, these anxiety disorders isn't the same as, as occasionally worrying about things or experiencing anxiety due to stressful life events. Now, here's the big thing that I want you to hear in this. If you are experiencing these symptoms and they interfere in your life, or if you, you think you might have an anxiety disorder, get in touch with your doctor, please. Uh, getting a physical examination from a healthcare provider might help them diagnose your symptoms and find the right treatment. And hear me when I say that there is no shame in that. And in fact, if you're looking for a qualified counselor to talk with, I'd encourage you to reach out to Mosaic Counseling here in Ottawa County in Michigan. They are committed to making sure people can get the help that they need regardless of their insurance coverage, coverage or even their ability to pay. So please reach out. But you know, like I said, uh, we, we all deal with anxious thoughts and worries that creep in and, and threaten our peace. I saw this meme on Friday that perfectly depicts the feelings of anxiety that, that often get at us. I mean, just looking at this makes my, my heart beat faster. I mean, am I right? We know that feeling. For the month of October, we are spending time looking at Jesus and how he understands our lives and offers hope for the questions, the struggles, and the real life pains that we all deal with. And, and we're getting introduced to the He Gets Us advertising campaign as well. Now, this campaign uh, wanted to address the increasingly prevalent realities of life. As they did research and asked questions of everyday people like you and me about their life experiences, Anxiety struggles rose to the top again and again. So as their purpose is to help people encounter the real Jesus, they asked, did Jesus wrestle with tension, with nervousness and stress too? And you know what they found? He did. So the question is, how do we understand anxiety? And how can we as, as followers of Christ help others who are suffering from anxious thoughts I mean, how can we offer a refreshing approach to anxiety? Now, there are a variety of things that our world has come up with to help us deal with and, and manage and overcome mental health struggles like anxiety and depression. Uh, counseling, medication, meditation, physical and behavioral therapies, group therapies, and more. And they all have their place. And again, like I said, there is no shame in utilizing any of them to find healing and wholeness. See, we have a means of overcoming our anxieties and overpowering our worries. And oftentimes, you know, it's one that medical science, science rarely acknowledges. And Jesus modeled it for us. He lived it, in fact. See, the most, one of the most re refreshing realities about Jesus is that he gets us because he lived like us. He experienced the same anxiety and fear, worry, and dread that we do. And he endured it. We can too when we look to him and, and we can help others endure when we invite them to engage with Jesus in the same way. Now, one night the, the gospels tell us that Jesus became particularly worried because he knew his adversaries were coming for him. He'd soon face arrest, torture, and, and even execution. I mean, I, I gotta imagine it created an unimaginable weight on him. 
like many people do, Jesus tried to escape to a favorite quiet place. It was this, this garden with a bunch of old growth olive trees on the side of a mountain. Uh, he even brought a few friends with him for emotional support. But overwhelmed with exhaustion, his friends, they couldn't stay awake as he, as he pleaded with God to make his problems go away. But this was a petition he knew wasn't going to be answered. Jesus said his soul was grieved to the point of death. And that's how he had described his anxiety. He reportedly suffered hematohydrosis. This is a, a rare condition caused by acute emotional stress where the sweat glands rupture, causing him to literally sweat drops of blood. He tried to cope with the anxiety as best he knew. And just like many of us, his coping mechanism was not a match for his anxiety. His adversaries captured him later that evening in the garden. Yet despite his inability to find relief, Jesus found the strength to face his accusers and submit to them willingly and without violence, knowing that his death had a purpose and that it would further his message of love. So he didn't stop feeling anxious, but he was able to find strength that he needed to endure. And so can we. You know, anxiety, worry, fear, dread. I mean, we all experience it. We all get anxious when we when we fret about the future and, and we get depressed when we fret over the past. But deep down, we all know that being anxious doesn't actually help anything. And there's tons of people and resources out there that try offering answers to fix us, right? Uh, medications, self-care practices, counseling, meditation. I mean, in fact, anxiety and depression have become big money business in our world. The Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca, he wasn't wrong when he said, he suffers more than is necessary who suffers before it is necessary. Now the word worry in English, it comes from the Anglo-Saxon word that means to strangle. I mean, we get that one, right? In the New Testament, this the second part of the Bible that introduces us to Jesus, the word anxiety or worry, it comes from a word that means to divide. And that's what worry does, isn't it? I mean, it divides our attentions, our emotions, our decisions. It strangles us in a way that other things just don't. And sometimes it even feels like it's stealing the very breath from our lungs. Now, Jesus, it tells us in the scriptures, was, was totally God and totally human in a way that doesn't make sense to our minds. The Bible says that, that even though he was human like us, he never sinned. He lived in such a way that he never disobeyed God, never lived selfishly. But he did get anxious, just like us. What we see from his experience with anxiety is that he shows us a better way of handling those feelings than letting it divide or strangle us. Now, the first thing that we need to understand about this refreshing response to anxiety that Jesus offers is that it can either be a normal human response or it can take us into sin. Now, like we've said, we all face anxiety, but Jesus told us not to be anxious. And the Apostle Paul did the same thing. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he'll give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. And then Paul says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. And I don't know about you, but just reading these passages makes me worry about things. I mean, And, and yet, Jesus... He's giving us here a different way through our struggles. Now, anxiety is far more complicated than we'd like to think. Uh, sometimes people try to paint it as, as sinful or wrong, and others dismiss it as simply just being realistic about the world. But, but anxiety is a lot more of a mixed bag. In fact, there are, are three kinds of anxiousness, I think. Uh, the first one is, is anxiety that's a natural response to high-pressure situations. Right? I mean, we get anxious because of, of perceived threat in, in the future. You know, something that's, that's going to or that we think might possibly happen. 
you know, getting that, that ominous diagnosis from a doctor is going to, going to bring us to a level of anxiety, right? That's expected. You know, this is the anxiousness that we all feel regularly. Now, for some, th there are clinical reasons that can create or worsen our anxious reactions. These responses are not sinful or wrong. They're just natural emotional responses. Now, if we act on them wrongly, they can lead us to sin. The second kind of anxiousness is, is anxiety as a feeling of being convicted uh, about an offense or a wrongdoing. You know, we did something wrong and that nagging feeling about it causes us anxiety. Uh, we worry about getting caught, about the consequences of our actions, about how this might mess up our lives or the lives of others. Now, another piece of that is, is we can also feel anxious when we feel like we're missing something like, or like something is wrong. You know, maybe we don't have the things we think we need to make it through life. So we're anxious about it. You know, I think that's what Jesus was talking about here in Matthew chapter six. He says, you know, worrying about eat, uh, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear, you know, those things that we need in life. And the third kind of anxiety is, is anxiety from, that arises from missing, God's, missing out on God's love. You know, both of our passages here, um, Jesus and Matthew and Paul and Philippians, they kind of allude to this. Paul, he contrasts the peace of God with anxiety. And then Jesus said that the proper response to anxiety for a Christ follower is to believe that God will provide. And then to... to fix our lives, to orient our lives in such a way that we put God and his kingdom first as a priority. See, when we put uh, so much focus and attention on God, we don't have as much time to worry about missing out on his love. So it's our response to these anxiety-inducing situations that either can be natural or they can have the potential to lead us away from God and into sin. The second point that we need to understand about this refreshing approach to, to anxiety is that anxiety can, can either push us away from God or to him. You know, Jesus often spent time alone with his father. Uh, Luke 5, 16 tells us that Jesus often would do this. He would, he would get away from the crowds and, and the needs and everything else so that he could focus on connecting with God. In fact, rather than being a last resort, uh, like it is for us, it was often Jesus's regular practice to first spend time with God. Later on in, in his life, uh, after hearing the news that his cousin, John, who was called the Baptist, uh, had been killed, what does Jesus do? Well, in Matthew 14, 14, it tells us, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. See, when he was faced with a terrible loss, the, the death of his cousin and friend, he ran to God. When we face circumstances that cause us to worry, we can respond by distancing ourselves from God or by drawing closer to him. You know, what's your go-to response? You know, I'm going to admit that, that often my, my first response in these situations is to worry about myself, to spend time running over all the possibilities, the possible outcomes, uh, to, to try to figure things out on my own, and then maybe I'll try to reach out to God. But Jesus, he chose to draw close to God first. And we can learn to do that too. You know, it doesn't come naturally. In fact, running from God is our natural response. But we can train ourselves with God's help to run to him when our thoughts turn anxious. And, you know, not only did God or did Jesus run to God, but he did something else in those times. Uh, see, anxiety, it can either be met in community or in isolation. At times, Jesus, he wanted to be alone with God as father. But in the Garden of Gethsemane on that last night, when he was in deep pain and anguish, when he was sweating those drops of blood, he brought some of his disciples with him. See, Jesus recognized his need for fellowship and community, even in his deep time of anxiousness. Sometimes uh, in the stories of the Bible, you know, we, we find people who had to stand alone. But most of the time, they had someone with them to help them, even to stand with them. Moses had Aaron. David had his mighty men. Jesus had his 12 friends. Paul even had companions on his journeys in the book of Acts. 
See, friends, isolation is never a good place to be when we battle anxiety. And yet that's often where, what we do to ourselves, isn't it? We, we pull away from friends and loved ones because, well, because we don't want to burden them. We don't want to bother them. We don't want to want them to judge us or think less of us, or we're afraid of, afraid of what they might say or do. So we do exactly the opposite of what God has given us in these times. See, God has given us fellowship in the church, uh, in in community, a community of love and grace and support with friends and family to walk with us in the hard times. Remember those statistics that I mentioned at the start about uh, the tragic increase in in those experiencing anxiety and depression, uh, those contemplating suicide, and even the number of young people that can no longer find themselves able to cope with the stresses of everyday life? You know, within our society, there is an ever growing need to meet people in the midst of their isolation and anxiety. In a recent study by Harvard's Making Caring Common Project, it said 36% of respondents reported serious loneliness, feeling lonelier frequently or almost all the time or all the time. It's even worse in the young adult population that has seen a 43% increase in loneliness since the pandemic while 63% is experiencing significant symptoms of anxiety and depression more broadly. See, faced with anxiety, it's clear that many of our friends and neighbors and those in our communities are falling into isolation and it's leading to anxiety and worse. Our calling as Christians is to extend the invitation of Jesus to fellowship, to sit down at his table, to join his community, the church, Being with others, you know, people who know what the struggles are like, those who are willing to walk with one another, to bear each other's burdens, pray together, sacrifice for each other, forgive, love, you know, just to be there for each other. That's the beauty of church community. That It's almost like God knew that humans would have a need for help and support and community throughout their life. So we've seen that anxiety can be a normal, natural human response that has the potential to take us to sin. It can push us away from God or push us towards God. And we can meet it either in community or isolation. But what about, but what we also need to, to, to get about Jesus' response to anxiety is where it ends. See, anxiety either ends with surrender or struggle. Anxiety unchecked runs wild in our lives. Uh, It sends our minds spinning and our lives into a tailspin. It becomes hard to manage even the everyday parts of life, let alone the things that bring us the stress and the pain. It's what often leads us to addictive or even destructive choices to try to fill up the empty places and numb the pain. Remember, Jesus dealt with anxiety just like us. He, and in fact, he dealt with some things, God willing, that we would never have to endure. I mean, if you remember that that time alone grieving and agonizing in the garden was followed by his being arrested and beaten and sentenced to death and hung on a cross. And that was the, the cruelest form of punishment the Roman Empire had come up with. Matthew 27 tells this terrible story. And, and picking up in verse 46, we read, At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, as he was hanging there dying, dying for us, bearing our sin, experiencing the punishment that was ours, he cried out to God, expressing how he felt abandoned by God. So we see Jesus's humanity here. Uh, as he feels the weight of all of humanity's sins on his shoulders. He he knew what our lives were like. He, he knows our pain. He gets us. He knows what it's like to feel abandoned. Do you? You know, when we, when we feel like that, we can take comfort in knowing that Jesus, he was right there with us. And just like Jesus did, we can turn to God who knows our abandonment and our struggles. See, when, when Jesus felt like that he remained focused on god his his response to his anxious feelings was surrender he turned his pain over to god in trust and when he said it is finished he also said father into your hands i commit my spirit see he gave it all to god 
in, including his very life, trusting that God would work even in the midst of all of this horribleness. Now, often our our anxious thoughts are, are dictated by pain, right? I mean, whether it's mental, relational, or even just physical pain. You know, maybe it's pain that, that is temporary or it's chronic. But that, that pain can become a powerful force in creating our anxiety and making it go on and on. When we feel ourselves in those places where the anxiety just won't stop, where the worries just keep coming at us, we have a choice. We can continue to struggle, looking for solution after solution, scheming to try to fix things ourselves. We can get more desperate and, and for a solution, for something, for anything that will give us some relief from the pain. And a lot of times we turn to those things that make the pain, that numb the pain or make us forget about it, right? It's, it's uh, drugs or medications, alcohol, porn, shopping, self-harm actions. You know, we try these things, except we find that they don't really give us any relief. They don't actually make things better. But that's where Jesus comes in, this alternate way. You know, when we're in the midst of that, we can remind ourselves who we are and whose we are. We can remember who our God is. We can remind ourselves and one another that we have a God who cares about all things. Like it says here in Matthew 6, who cares about the birds in the air and the flowers of the field. Right? It says in, in Matthew 6, 30, if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. See, we can gently, patiently remind ourselves that we have an identity in God. That he has done the hardest part of all of this by enduring through the pain for us. You know, we can we can hear Jesus say in verse 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, righteously and he will give you everything you need. And remember what Paul says, don't worry about anything instead of instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. God has done the hardest part, and now our job is just to surrender. And then to be there to lift up and walk with others as they surrender too. Now, when it comes to talking to other with others about Jesus, when we, when we try inviting others to engage with the real Jesus, we have to remember that the Christian life isn't a promise of freedom from trouble. Right? In fact, Jesus tells us that when we follow him, we'll have even more trouble. But our freedom in Christ actually promises us the freedom from the wasteful need to worry and all the anxiety-induced stress that that brings. And that's what's refreshing about Jesus and his approach to anxiety. See, when we come to Jesus with our worries, our fears, our anxious thoughts, we find that we have confidence in God and that he is there with us in the midst of all of the suffering and that we can know that God's there for us in the midst of it and that we'll never be alone. So how do you handle your anxiety? How should we handle our anxieties? Well, by following Jesus' example. Turn your focus and your attention, your worries and your prayers over to God. Trust him to be who he says he is, to care for you as he promised. Support one another, reach out and find that support. And if, if your anxiety crosses from occasional natural responses to the stressors of life, please, please don't hesitate to seek help. God calls us to use all the resources we have at our disposal. And sometimes counseling and medications are part of that plan to health and wholeness. When Jesus struggled with anxiety, he didn't run from it. But he ran full into the arms of his father. And we need to do the same thing. In fact, let's go ahead and start running to God now. Let's, let's pray. Jesus, we need you today. We don't often think about it, but when we look at the stories and the gospels, we realize that, yeah, you, you did live a lot like we do. And you even struggled with anxious thoughts just like we do. That's really encouraging, Lord. It reminds us that you do, in fact, get us. And it also means that we can look to you for how we should respond to our anxieties and worries. We know all too well that those thoughts and feelings 
you know, when we let them run away can cause us to lose focus on you. They can cause us to get wrapped up in our own little worlds and, and forget that you've promised to be with us and help us and guide us through everything. Father, help us to trust that. Just like you take care of, of the birds and the grasses, help us to trust that you'll take care of us even more. Help us not to lean on our own understandings and then go the way of sin. But help us to lean into you, to run into your arms and into the community of believers, our church family that you brought us to. We pray for those who deal with, with more extreme anxieties, more than just the occasional feelings that are a natural response to life. But for those who are, are burdened and overwhelmed by them. Lord, we ask that, that you would give them courage to, to seek help to find support and to use all the resources that you've blessed humanity with to bring them healing and wholeness and help us to offer the hope of Jesus to those we encounter in our lives who struggle with anxious thoughts and worries. Help us to tell them about the real Jesus, the Jesus who gets us, who gets them so they too can find hope and healing in you. Lord, we pray for our church today, for our family, for those who are suffering and struggling, for those who are dealing with pain from physical illnesses. Lord, we ask that you would be with them and bring them healing and peace. And um, Lord, we pray for those who are, are dealing with, with life crises right now and they just don't know what to do. Lord, we pray for your wisdom and that you would surround them with people to, to support them and love them. We pray for people who are, are trying to pick up the pieces of a devastated life um, Lord, we, we, whether that's uh, the loss of a loved one or, or destruction from a natural disaster or whatever, Lord, we just ask that you would uh, bring your peace to them and you would, you're, you would raise up your church to help in those times of need. Lord, hear us as we lift up to you these and so many other prayers this week. And, and hear us now as we pray the way Jesus taught us to as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we're at the point in our service where we set aside time to receive an offering. This is where we give back to God from all that he's blessed us with, where we give of our financial resources to, to the, um, bless the church, to do the work of ministry, to reach out and share the love and the hope of Jesus Christ with those around us. And this is something that, that we call this an act of worship. Um, it's not like paying a bill. It's not uh, like, like fulfilling an obligation. This is something that we do, that we're called to do as a means of honoring God with all that we have and all that we are. We oftentimes get into this rut of, of giving or not giving because of our life situations or, or whatever. And, and sometimes when we are givers, we, you know, we set up that regular giving through our online giving and, and we, we do it and we forget about it. But today in this time, we're invited to to just think for a few minutes about how important this is, about how vital it is that, that we not just be receivers from God, but we are givers to the world for God. Uh, that's, that's what we get to do with, with our offering is, is we get to give back because we have been blessed so much by God, because our lives have been transformed, because we have literally been saved by this message of Jesus Christ. And we want others to be saved as well. So today, as you give, you're invited to, to give in a, a lot of different ways. We have, like I said, our online giving, where you can give a one-time gift. You can set up recurring giving. You can give to special programs there. You can also uh, drop your offering in the mail or, or drop it off anytime you're at the church. And, you know, maybe what, I, what I'd like to do for us today is maybe even challenge you. If you're a regular giver, or if you're not even, um, you know, reach into your pocket or, or your billfold and see, you know, what do you have there? Um that you can maybe say, okay, God, uh, this is my over and above today. Um, this is this is for you um, to do with what you will 
to, to get that message of Jesus out into the world because there are so many people that need it. So I want to invite you to give as you feel led today and, and maybe even take that challenge of, of pulling something extra out and giving it back to God and, and trusting that God's going to use it to change and transform more lives today. Uh, as you, you do your giving today, as we continue in our service, we're going to pray over our offering. Um, we're going to um, sing a song of, of blessing, a prayer, a song, a song prayer of blessing called the doxology. And then we're going to sing our closing song for our worship service today. So I want to invite you to give and let's sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Friends, I pray that you encountered God today in a fresh way, in a, in a way that you hadn't before. Maybe, maybe you uh, saw a part of Jesus today that you hadn't known before and a part that brought you hope, um, hope for a better tomorrow, a uh, hope that you can go and now offer to others who need it. As we're preparing to, to end this service today, I want to remind you and, and be sure that you add our, our new COMC texting number to your phone contacts this week. It's 844-453-7363. You can go on and open a text message and text the word hello to opt into our texting. Uh, you can also give our prayer chain a shot by texting the word prayer and then your joys and concerns underneath it there uh, so we can be praying. And this week, I want to invite you to, to try texting the word anxious to our texting number. Uh, if you do, you're going to receive a four-day follow-up devotional sent right to your phone that will help you think about and process Jesus's response to anxiety, the anxieties that we all experience. It's going to be a really great devotional, so make sure you do that today. Uh, take some time this week, like I said, to check out the He Gets Us campaign at hegetsus.com. There are many res resources there to help you in your faith, but also to help you start some life-giving conversations with those around you about Jesus. Make sure you check it out. I want to share a special thank you to all who came out ye uh, yesterday to help us with our church work day. We did work inside and outside getting the church cleaned and, and outside getting it ready for the fall. Um, and, and those who came, they did a great job and they worked really hard. So thank you um, for, for all those who came out. Uh, we're having another work day in, in about four weeks on Saturday, November 5th to get even more done. Um, so please make plans to join us uh, for that uh, on November 5th for that morning. Friends, I look forward to gathering with you again next week to worship. Invite someone, a friend to join you so that they too can, can hear about this real Jesus and find hope here in this community. If I can do anything for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. May you be blessed and encouraged this week to live out an audaciously courageous faith that believes that in Jesus Christ there is hope and that hope can change the world. Go in peace today, my friends. Amen.